We are recording now. Erica, is it it's saying it's recording, correct? On your screen? Um, I don't, I don't see. Like a red button with like, a circle around it. Yeah, I see I that, but I, I, I don't know if I can tell from my screen. Um, okay. I might, yeah, this yeah, is I Ravish see. as well. I see it yes. recording. I awesome. see it, I Thank see. you. Thank you. Yes, yes we're all on board. Recording. Also, as a reminder for everyone, if you could please, for those that have uh, abbreviations on their name, could you put in the chat your first and last name so we can be able to take attendance and be able to, to put you on the, uh, the listserv here? So we appreciate you being able to do so. And uh, we're gonna get started. So thank you everyone for joining to our uh, another Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group General Meeting. My name is Mike McCoy, I'm the chair of the group here. And today we have a very special uh, guest from uh, the College of St. Gitts over in India that are going to presenting on their medical chain EHR solution. It'll be great uh, for all of us to get insights on and to understand uh, more deeper what they're able to do. Now, with any uh, hyperledger general meeting, we must go over the general, or sorry, the antitrust policy within the Linux Foundation. Just so you know, all Linux Foundation meetings involve par participation with many industry competitors. Uh, do not disclose anything that you would not want to be disclosed into public, into the public eye or public forum, uh, as well as anything that would be uh, com compromising to you, your business, or your internal strategies of your representative companies. Uh, pretty much just don't share anything you wouldn't want to be public. And so thank, thank you everyone for being aware of that. Uh, now we would like to go into introductions a little bit before we go into the main presentation. So I'm the new Hyperledger uh, Special Interest Group Chair. I started, I guess, officially two weeks ago, which is pretty cool. And, and we've, uh, we've had some internal conversations with myself and our Vice Chair, Erica Bierbauer, on how we could uh, better utilize the group in the future. And, uh, and yeah, I'd, I'd love for anyone that's, that's new to the group, I see a couple new people that may be with us today. Um, we could start with, uh, we could, well, obviously we'll get to the St. Gitz group that's new as well, but uh, Remo, I might not be as aware of you. Please, if you could introduce yourself to the group and uh, tell us what brings you to learn more. Uh, okay, so am I audible? Say that again, I'm sorry. So am I audible? Yeah, you're, you're on. on, we can hear you. Okay, uh, my name is Remo Binay. Uh, as a final year student of Sengis College of Engineering. I first came, I came to know about blockchain technology uh, when it was time to start a final year project. Uh, uh, the idea thing was more towards medical, uh, medical industry because we thought we had to do something that contributes to society. That's when our faculty uh, introduced us to the blockchain technology and my friends and I, team leader, that's Sajit Asa, introduced us into the technology and we are eager to learn more about it. And so we are here in this presentation. We hope to learn more towards uh, coming days. That's awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and we have Kent's pretty regular. Uh, Jim, you're pretty regular as well, correct? Yeah, I'm in and out. And honestly, I'm not here all the time. Um, I don't directly work in healthcare at this point. I've done healthcare systems in the past, but. Um, the interest was around a lot of the overlapping technology. So I was coming from the automotive space, uh, engineering a lot of solutions and supply chain and automotive. And we had exactly all, I'll call it 95% of the exact same issues in healthcare when I compared them with Stephen Elliott. And so as a result, um, it made sense to, in a sense, listen and look, learn about um, a lot of the things going on in the healthcare because they do apply in a broader context. And certainly I've always had an interest on data integrity and um, data quality and all that. And so there's a lot uh, in the healthcare space, uh, particularly both on data uh, management as well as blockchain, it makes sense here. So it's a good group to participate in, thanks. It's awesome, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, we also have um, Prashant, I, I might not be as familiar with you, but are, are you new to the group? Yes, uh, thank you for welcoming me. Uh, I'm Prashant Khambekar. I represent Harbinger Systems, and Harbinger Systems uh, does outsource software development for other companies. 
and uh, one of my customers is into healthcare and uh, uses hyperledger sort uh, so we have entire engineering uh, armature for, for that uh, product and uh, specifically the, the product is about uh, patient ownership of their health records so that they can you know go for a second opinion or they can possibly monetize the data by giving it to pharmaceutical and other research companies and by the way prashant i apologize all i saw was prashant with a k i didn't see your actual last name so i apologize i'm very much aware prashant it's a great individual here in the philadelphia blockchain region that i'm a part of and so uh thank you for joining us today i apologize on that. thank you sorry about that um david i might not be as aware of you david elmitz hey there yeah i am uh i am new here um i'm uh i don't currently work in healthcare i work in financial services but i'm looking to transition into health tech so i wanted to learn more about some of the, the different challenges in health tech and, and some of the um, potential solutions that are that are being explored. Awesome, thank you very much. Oliver, I'm not familiar with you as well, so if you could give an intro, or maybe you've come, been here often. Sorry, I was just trying to finally unmute. Uh, yeah, hi, no, I don't really come in, I bounce. I think I've been to a couple meetings before, um, I actually do work um, in uh, healthcare, and I used to do a lot of um, EHR, so I'm curious what's going on here. But we didn't touch blockchain, so. No worries, it's all part of the ecosystem. It's only one technology to cover it all. And then, uh, Elise has been here before. Uh, Indira, if you wanna give an intro to, to people in the group. Hi, good morning. This is Indira Mysore. Um, I have been to this meeting before. This is not my first time, but um, my career uh, predominantly has been in uh, global IT space in uh, five continents and uh, uh, in global corporations in aerospace manufacturing and uh, technology and consulting and oil and gas. And my recent position was with um, healthcare, biotech, pharma, medical diagnostics, the Ro Hafmela Roche. Um, Swiss um, healthcare company and uh, I have been in the blockchain space for the last two years kind of learning and coming up to speed and um, interested in have been part of some nonprofits um, making contributions and working towards uh, especially some COVID credentials um, governance framework as well as ethical framework for blockchain and healthcare space um, recently honored to join uh, Consensus Health as one of the board of advisors and glad to be part of this group. Awesome, thank you very much for that. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our, uh, our guest speakers and the team at St. Gitz. So please, let's start with Sajit and anyone else that's a part of the team. And uh, I'll encourage you all to share your screen for the presentation that you have for us today. And thank you very much for taking the time uh, to, to entertain us entertain us, and educate us on this, uh, on this global solution. So please, I'll take it away. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so I, I guess uh, I'll share my screen. So uh, can you guys uh, see my presentation screen? We can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so uh, these are my group mates, Srijit uh, P. Nair, uh, myself, Sajit Asa, uh, and my team members are Srijit P. Nair, Rimo Binay, and Ritu and Philippe. So we are representing Sengis College of Engineering. So uh, uh, from the uh, start of, uh, so uh, we'll start from the source, like uh, where did we get the idea for doing this uh, project? So I guess uh, my friend Srijit will be starting over here. So over to Srijit. Hello. Yeah, yeah we, 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 can, we can hear you. Okay, first okay. so of all, I would like to thank the hypology community for giving us an opportunity to present our idea for them. 
uh, Mechain, that was our final year project, and we had implemented a uh, dominant feature of our idea. And currently, we are working to retain our architecture and to add some more additional fun functionalities to our idea. So, first of all, I would like to pitch our idea by saying how we converge to this idea. Uh, when we heard about the final year project, uh, first of all, we started finding out or uh, figuring out the real life problems that we encounter day by day. On that time, uh, one of the cousins, it's a real life incident, uh, cousin of uh, one of our group mate, uh, admitted in a reputable hospital uh, here, and he was uh, admitted due to some mild fever, but due to overdose of medicine, he has been sent to ICU and his condition become worse. Uh, the parents <laughs> raised a uh, voice against the community, but uh, actually, yeah. Hey, Suji, uh, just a second, uh, just a second, Suji. Um, your audio is a little bit choppy, and uh, you sound a little echoey and a little far away. Is there any way you can get closer to a mic or your computer so we could hear you a little bit clearer? Uh, so, it's not actually it's a phone, and a little bit complaint for the microphone, so that. Am I clear now? It's about the same, but we we can continue. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, that was due to some misunderstanding and order in prescription by the doctor. And as I said, uh, the boy got to ICU. Uh, but by God's grace, uh, his health condition become okay and the expenses were taken by the hospital. And likewise, the problem were solved. But uh, on that time, we understood, uh, we can figure out something happening in this medical field. So some, uh, actually we don't have any access to our medical data. That was the first thought that came to our mind. Uh, we are approaching the hospital, uh, prescriptions were given, but actually we don't know where these prescriptions or how these prescriptions are stored. Uh, who are manipulating this? Uh, access to that like this we don't we are actually completely blind towards our medical data we care for all of our other data like social media data and all but uh, in our current system we actually don't care how much important our medical data is if uh, knowing our medical condition even anyone can attack us and let us to death so actually in our system there is or in our country there is no proper ehr system uh, each hospital stores ehr according to our according to their uh, perspectives. So there is no proper EHR system. Also, the problem occurs in the field of interoperability. What I mean is that uh, when we are consulting a doctor or a consulting an eye specialist in a region, and we are migrating to another region, where we are consulting an, another eye specialist. Uh, actually, we don't, we, here we are not getting a proper or a continuous checkup. There, a doctor uh, work according to their protocol, and when we are migrating to another region, we are uh, treated by that doctor. So there is no, in, what I mean is that there is no medical backup. We have uh, what uh, in WhatsApp we have a chat backup and all. I guess we don't have a backup for our medical data. That much important data, we don't have a backup, and we don't have a control over that. So we understood that the problem is the centralization of that data to the hospital. So next our thought process was how we can take back this control to patient because our data means that should be in our hand. So how we can take back that control to our hand. On that team, the blockchain club of our college and faculty members, with the help of them, we came to know about uh, the technology blockchain. Actually, in the starting this, we have zero knowledge on blockchain and we started our projects. So from them, we understood what blockchain and what are the default features that blockchain offering us. And we understood that that's the right technology, the disruptive technology that should be, and that is the correct technology which, which can be used to solve the problems we, are, we have identified. So likewise, we started our project, and this, the project MedChain happened. So uh, then we go through different phases. We first of all created an architecture that was a little bigger. Uh, then we cut short the architecture. Uh, then with the help of uh, Kerala Blockchain Academy and all, we go through our project. And finally, we presented, as I said, we presented the dominant feature of our uh, project in front of uh, the college faculties. So the architecture, uh, the solution that we designed 
uh, what should be uh, uh, in, the, in the coming talk, yeah, we will discuss about it. I welcome my friend, fellow Primo, to explain about the solution that we found out for these problems. The main problems that we identified was the centralization of the data and the interoperability of that, and how it, it can be show, solved with blockchain with our own architect. So I, uh, Primo, you know, I, can you explain the solution of our project? Okay. Uh... Okay, so as my teammate explained, uh, we came to the conclusion that the main challenges faced were data security and its interoperability. We are aware that all the medical institutions here has their own centralized EHR system, EHR meaning electronic health record, and the uh, control of the system goes solely to the institution itself. That is, the patient has no authority over it whatsoever. So for that, uh, we propose to decentralize all the currently centralized EHR system so that there exists only one true version of an individual's electronic health record in a unique secure network. Now consider a case where a patient comes under a circumstance uh, which causes him to consult another doctor in another hospital. And the record for that individual is created at that hospital also. So rather than having multiple copies of a patient's EHR, we thought of having a network which creates and stores a single record for an individual which provides utmost security and integrity to the data. So our aim was to place the patient at the center of the system where he or she is the one that has control over their own EHR, that is whether which medical professional can access the data and for how long. Access can be granted and reviewed as per the patient's convenience. So we wanted a system which was secure, tamper-proof, and does not solely belong to a single entity. And that is where we saw to implement, uh, that is where we saw that blockchain technology fits all the required features for a network we aim to implement. So MedChain is a combination of the cutting edge blockchain protocol technology, distributed storage, coupled with uh, open source framework that hope to set a standard in the globally compliant medical record keeping. We use a third party store, distributed storage system for storing the medical record and we store the hash pointed to these medical records in our network, thus adding an additional layer of security. Finally, by addressing the control of these records to the individual itself, the medical, rec medical records will not be trapped in isolation and in inaccessible silos. And the patient can provide access to any authorized healthcare professional, ensuring the integrity of the data. Okay, for the execution, uh, we created a web app where the doctor could create an EHR for an individual and also access the records that was authorized to them by the patients. And we used a mobile application for the patient where he or she could grant or revoke access to a specific doctor uh, using the doctor ID when and as he is needed. We use Hyperledger Composite tool to initially implement our network, but currently we are trying to do it in a uh, Hyperledger fabric as Hyperledger Composer is, uh, has been disapproved in the last year. Next, uh, my teammate Renu uh, will provide the details on the structure and the overall workflow of our project. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Okay. So the technology we use here is the blockchain. So the blockchain network has no central authority which make it as a democratized system. Since it is a shared and immutable ledger, the information in it is open for everyone to see. But here we use a permission blockchain for the security of patient data. In permission blockchain, uh, only the participant with the permission can access the blockchain and view the data. So next is the structure of MedChain. Uh, uh, so in this structure, we have mainly two participants, that is doctor and patient. The patient and doctor has their own ID. So before consulting a doctor, we give access to the doctor's ID uh, using the EHR ID. So the doctors can view the EHR. So in our system, the patient has the control over the EHR. Each patient has their own EHR. So the patient can use this EHR in the hospital that are connected to our network. Uh, the access to the EHR is done by the patient itself. That is, the patient has the control to revoke and grant access to the EHR. So mainly we have a web app and mobile app. Uh, we are giving the access through the mobile app and through the web app we can view and edit EHR. Uh, when we are allowing, uh, when we are allowing uh, the access, a transaction is happening there. So in this transaction, the asset is EHR. Uh, we have a REST API system uh, which will connect the front-end and Hyperledger blockchain network. So next, uh, next is the basic functioning. So there are mainly four steps in basic functioning. Uh, the first one is data generation. Here, the data is generated. 
so the data can be generated from doctors note or scan report etc so next step is storage of network uh, the generated data is encrypted and, and given an id and this is stored on the patient's blockchain and the third step is data access queries here the data is requested so the id on the blockchain is used to retrieve the encrypted data so the last and final step is decryption and data display. Uh, the data in the decrypted and displayed on the relevant de device. Here, the device is web app. Uh, through the web app, we can view and edit EHR. Next, next I call uh, my teammate Sajid SR to Hello, hello, am I audible now? We can hear you. Hello. Okay, fine. Cool. Uh, so uh, my friends just uh, gave just an intro about uh, actually what is happening in the network. So actually, when we were starting the project, uh, we were uh, pretty much uh, new to the system because we didn't have any prior exposure to blockchain network or hyperledger. Uh, so we just started uh, from zero. We were like totally blind. Uh, we didn't know what to do. Uh, we just had an idea about uh, blockchain because we had some couple of uh, some uh, training program in our college, and uh, our college actually supports blockchain. So that's how we came to know about uh, this uh, hyperledger fabric blockchain and all. So uh, just with the, some uh, theoretical knowledge about blockchain, we started the project. So uh, for, with that knowledge, we just created this basic uh, architectural system. So uh, this is a data flow diagram of our project. So what actually happened is uh, basically there are four functions. The first one is data generation. So there the uh, doctor will be uh, so, uh, doctor uh, the hospital. The hospital will be uh, creating the uh, record data for the patient, and it will be stored in a secure storage. So um, then uh, the pointer to that storage will be stored in the ledger itself. So um, so that's how the system works. So whenever uh, we are querying for data then uh, with the consensus uh, we can query the data uh, we can only view the data uh, when the patient is gi giving proper permission so whenever uh, querying is done uh, what we actually do is we just uh, go to the storage and we'll just uh, collect the data and we'll uh, compare the hash that's on the ledger and the data that we got uh, uh, from the stored uh, actually the hash of the data that we uh, got from the stored ledger so we'll compare the hash and if the hash uh, is uh, same so then uh, the, the, it will be matched and the data will be passed to the uh, requester, a uh, verified requester. So uh, even if the data is not matching or like if the permission is not given, then the data will be not shown to the uh, requester. So, uh, so we uh, actually, uh, like I said, uh, we, we are just now currently under the development and uh, we didn't know any about hyperledger or hyperledger fabric. We are just in the beginning uh, steps because uh, uh, actually, we came to know a lot of. Uh, we came to know a lot about hyperledger uh, during these couple of uh, months because we had a lot of um, uh, uh, meetings with uh, eminent personalities in hyperledger fabric. So we have a. We just got a basic uh, knowledge about how to just uh, uh, create a uh, architecture and all. So, uh, so that that's uh, we are doing it using hyperledger fabric. Uh, one of our versions, uh, the, we, we built a uh, demo version, which was on Hyperledger Composer. But uh, as you all know, currently Hyperledger Composer is not uh, supported uh, uh, now. So actually, we have to switch it over from uh, Composer to Native Fabric. Uh, we we, uh, we thought about this because we had we, we had an interest in taking about project to next level. So actually, we started this uh, it just like a college level project. Uh, we just, just finish it or like wrap it up by doing something and show it to the uh, our uh, panel judging panel but uh, when we were uh, dealing with our project a lot more we just uh, we we saw some potential uh, in the system so when if it is implemented then we can uh, solve a lot of problems uh, in society because actually people don't have any idea about what is happening with the medical data like what is actually happening where are this data going uh, so so that kind of stuff we can uh, we can eliminate like uh, that sort of things so that's why we are now switching over to a uh, native fabric and uh, what we're actually planning to do it we are planning to create a uh, channel system uh, using this fabric uh, so organizations uh, within uh, within the network can be like uh, independent channels 
uh, with each like uh, in our case uh, like each hospital will be like an independent organization and uh, they will be having a separate ledger for them so on uh, the medical uh, since the medical data uh, is usually big so we'll be uh, not have directly say, saving the data into the ledger but uh, we'll be saving the data uh, in a third party uh, distributed storage and the data is kept in the uh, kept uh, like that and the address only the address to the data will be stored in the uh, ledger so that is how we are going to we are uh, planning to develop it when we are uh, building it in hyperledger fabric and we are currently under development uh, so next thing is uh, about uh, so this is the uh, third party storage system that we are planning to use that is ipfs so uh, i uh, mainly used to uh, it's a, uh, a distributed storage system so uh, we are currently using IPFS, uh, planning to use IPFS in our system. Uh, so, and the next other thing is what we are actually planning to do is give an encryption so that uh, we could uh, provide data integrity as well. So when a patient is, uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, so uh, when a patient is given access, uh, then the record will be uh, decrypted with the owner's uh, private key. And then uh, the symmetry key will be encrypted with the public key uh, using an RC algorithm. So when the access is revoked, uh, what happens is that the symmetry key is decrypted with the private key of owner of the health record. And uh, then again, the HR is uh, decrypted using the symmetry key. So uh, uh, after this, uh, the record goes uh, re-encryption. And uh, so that's how we are planning to do an encryption mechanism. And all these are uh, currently under development because uh, as I said, we, we don't have any experience in this uh, so uh, we are uh, uh, we are actually planning on this so uh, I guess, uh, when we'll uh, uh, get more resources we'll be able to finish it in no time so uh, like uh, this was the uh, one, uh, prototype that we have built uh, for showing a demo so uh, this was built on hyperledger composer currently it won't work because uh, composer has stopped uh, uh, this uh, Hyper just stopped the uh, uh, support for Composer. So actually, uh, we are not able to show this demo. This was uh, actually taken when we while we were doing it in college. So uh, this was just taken for showing uh, to the judges. So this was the, uh, the the left side. You can see the web app which we created. Uh, this will be given with the hospitals. And the right side, you can see a mobile app. So that will be uh, with the patient. So whenever a patient has to give an access, you can use a mobile app and uh, provide the doctor ID. Uh, the IDs for the doctor, uh, the doctor IDs will be like public. Uh, so using that ID, uh, we can give the access. Uh, so when the access happens, just like I said, uh, we'll be uh, retrieving the uh, data from the storage and we'll check the hashes and if they match and if the, perm if the permission is given, the data will be shown. And if uh, any of this is not uh, uh, matching, then it will be revoked. So uh, data will not be shown. So mm, that's uh, what we uh, planned so far. And uh, currently, uh, what is, uh, when we uh, did uh, some, more, some more research, actually, uh, uh, this, this, uh, we got this uh, survey reports from uh, internet. So we thought uh, actually hyperledger projects have given uh, a lot of importance now. So uh, also in healthcare sector, hyperledger projects are given a lot of, a lot of more importance. And also in our country also uh, blockchain projects are now supported uh, a lot so actually i thought uh, if we take this project uh, to a next level we could uh, do so much more so uh, this is an another um, yeah, update that we are uh, planning for our system like insurance fraud detection so uh, since the patient has an ehr system with them and you know, he has the all the uh, like all the history of uh, what actually happened with this medical data. So uh, uh, there was a, th there's an incident happened in New Delhi, like uh, a patient just claimed for his uh, medical uh, insurance and the health, this insurance company just uh, denied it totally. Um, they said uh, there's no uh, proper evidence so we cannot uh, grant you the insurance and, and, and as a result, he didn't get the, that sort of a good uh, medical care because uh, the, uh, because of this uh, problem and he didn't have that much money so that paved away for this uh, his death because he didn't got uh, that, that good amount to his uh, for a uh, good uh, health, uh, health treatment 
so for that case uh, then we thought actually if we have a system like this so a patient can easily like uh, track what happened actually with this medical data so he could approach a court if an insurance company denies him the medical claim he could easily approach a court and he can uh, he can uh, claim his uh, um, he, or he could file a petition or he could claim that uh, my medical data is proper by showing us our record and uh, the company has denied us uh, my, denied my medical claim so that and then he will be he will be having a proof within himself so that's one of the modification that uh, we thought uh, we could make in this system and another one is uh, actually that's uh, we didn't know how it will work or not we just uh, written some of the purpose like we could uh, integrate uh, machine learning like uh, that's uh, machine learning it, uh, like with the blockchain also so that's uh, purely uh, that's we did not we don't have a proper idea about that we just have a vague idea so how to integrating a machine learning uh, with uh, this uh, high, uh, blockchain technology so uh, what we are actually planning is if we if we, we are successful in, in integrating machine learning with our uh, like uh, our technology we could easily like predict the medicine for a person like we could predict the disease like uh, if we analyze the record structure like what all treatment he has undergone or what all uh, medicines he has been prescribed so uh, if we analyze that sort of data we'll get like uh, we could predict the disease he will be having like after two three years or like after five years or we could easily predict what he what uh, condition will he will be going to like that sort of things so that's purely uh, uh, we don't know how much we could be successful in that so that's all from our part uh, actually it's not i, I know almost uh, or uh, everyone if you uh, had a basic idea of our project uh, so we, we also are currently in developing phase so most of the things that, that we are, we are now trying to implement is not in our hands because uh, we don't have that that much exposure in this technology so what we are actually uh, uh, planning to do is uh, we are trying to get more into this uh, technology so that we could uh, learn so much more so that we can use that kind of resources that we get from uh, like uh, communicating with this community uh, so that we could get uh, more resources and we could put more of our efforts into our project also and, uh, and thank you so much for Hyperledger uh, for giving us uh, this opportunity to present our project here. I hope uh, we'll get we, we will be getting more resources from you guys so that uh, we could uh, develop our project uh, a lot more because uh, right now we are just uh, in the basic steps. We have to go so much uh, far and uh, it will be very nice if uh, I could uh, if our team could get uh, a little more resources from you guys so that we could develop our project so much more. So thank you so much. Sajid, thank you very much for the, the detailed presentation here. If someone were to want to get in contact with you uh, to help out as a resource to build on this, what is the best way to reach you at? Yeah, yeah uh, I could, uh, we, we could pass our contact information so that uh, uh, we can get that that kind of resources because actually what we are lacking is that we don't have that much uh, technical knowledge in depth in the technical knowledge about this uh, fabric technology like uh, this uh, channeling system uh, that's a, that sort of uh, things we don't have that much technical knowledge so it will be even nice uh, if uh, experts that who are currently working uh, on this kind of uh, medical uh, systems uh, with, uh, connected with the blockchain so if we could get uh, that kind of resource, it will be more helpful for us. Absolutely. If you want, feel free to put down that contact information in the chat here so people uh, can be able to access it. It will also be added to the wiki later on for the, I guess you want to say show notes as well. Uh, now, if you don't mind, we I would love to leave the next 20 minutes or 24 minutes or so for questions. And, we, and I'll go to questions in the chat first, then we'll make it more of an open forum. And, and get to those questions. So, so first question was by Indira. Is there a consortium backing the solution? Who are the sponsors in the healthcare industry, if that is applicable?
Sajith, if you or anyone from the team could be able to answer that. Also, you, you can stop sharing your screen at the moment um, unless there's a, a slide we want to reference to later on. Sajid, can you hear me? Or anyone else from the St. Kitts team? Is anyone available? Can you hear me to answer the question? Just reinforcing to you, we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. There are voices out here. I'm not alone. Um, Actually, there anyone? is uh, currently the system is generated as a uh, college project. There is no uh, sponsors uh, still available. Awesome. Thank you very much for those, those details. Um, next up, we have from Indira again. Are you targeting the solution for India solely? What are the local regulatory impacts from this model? Uh, Indira, actually, uh, we are targeting uh, the developing economies, especially in India, because we want to reimagine uh, the entire uh, healthcare industry, especially in India. And uh, coming to the regulatories, uh, you know, for enabling standardized and secure health information, uh, we need a kind of support from the adjacent health industries, like we need uh, support from uh, insurance and pharma. And uh, that have to be done before uh, going for any regulation. So since this is actually our academic project, uh, we are uh, right now we are not focusing on that. And after that, we are planning to, uh, you know, integrate all those stuffs. Awesome, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, maybe you've gone down this road a little bit or not, but another question from Indira was, how do you manage medical images, storage, access, retrieval, security and processing? Are these things that you and the team have considered yet uh, in evaluating how this would be used in industry? Actually, uh, they are planning to um incorporate the IPF system um, because we know that we can't so uh, that much of heavy uh, amount of data inside the ledger so they are planning to store this type of images uh, inside the IPF system and store the corresponding hash inside the blockchain. Indira any follow-ups to that that question that, that may uh, help your understanding? Oh, thank you. I, I think I understand now the context and the scope and background. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. I got to stop saying awesome. It's, it's too repetitive. Let's go with Jim Mason had another question for us. He asked how the project is funded. Uh, it's an academic project. We, we understood. So that, that question was answered. He asked then how is the data shared across the channel system? Uh, and, and, and if so, why? And, and how they may compare to, to versus a private data system that may not use a blockchain. Have you guys evaluated that? Actually, yeah, private, I'll just chime in there, but private data is a feature of Fabric blockchain. So when you wanna, in a sense, uh, share data, you could, uh, and still provide data privacy, if you will, you can share, um, in a sense, from a blockchain perspective, you can use channels as they proposed, uh, but channels are physically separate in a sense, conceptually blockchains, if you will. Um, so channel one doesn't normally have access to anything in channel two directly at all. Where if you use the private data feature, you can mix and match both data, sharing data from the blockchain, so to speak, as well as making data private on a channel. It's a different uh, feature of fabric, if you will. And I'm just asking why they're separating channels, using channel separation for data privacy. That's the concept they had. Sajit, are you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got disconnected. I'm really sorry. And uh, I see a question. What is the size of a typical health record? What is the maximum size of one? No, no, no. The, the question is, no, the, no, the question is, how is data shared across the channel system? Yeah, like, so, uh, so uh, actually uh, right now, uh, as I have said, we are uh, currently switching over to Fabric. So 
we don't have actually a clear idea about this uh, implementation of channeling system uh, we uh, what we have actually is just a theoretical knowledge so how do we do this and how do we do that so that's why I, when i was concluding i just asked we i need more resources i, I just presented because if i could uh, he, get more help so that i could just uh, implement this uh, what i have in my in my mind to just attest it in our uh, network so that how i could see how is it it, it, it will it work or or what will be its uh, issues and all. So uh, I don't have a detailed knowledge about the channel system and all. So, but my understanding was that, you know, these folks are only storing hashes on the chain and they actually yeah. take up over on IPFS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we so, have, uh, so in terms of sharing data and, and committing it to a private repo, it, it probably might not be uh, applicable. Yeah, uh, yeah, I got it. Because actually, currently we are now when we use IPFS, uh, right? Even then, we are uh, contacting a third party, so the data data is with them. So again, uh, yeah, that uh, that might not be a good issue. Uh, but uh, IPFS is like a just like uh, what we uh, the data is hashed inside IPFS. So uh, so what we the data store is like encrypted in IPFS. So I guess. Uh, uh, why did we choose? Uh, if we ask, why did we choose IPFS? Uh, that I, then I would say uh, that the data is uh, encrypted. Uh, so uh, we thought it will be a more safe uh, thing. Uh, like we got a good off uh, off chain storage system, which has an encrypted data store technology. So that way we chose IPFS. Um, Dr. Holt, that was Jonathan Holt that asked that question. Uh, do you want to elaborate more on the question you mentioned about regarding the IPFS as the, um, that, that may help you out on, uh, with understanding as well? Yeah, so I'm a big fan of IPFS. I'm a uh, contributor, core contributor, but I also have deep reservations about using it for storage of healthcare data, even if it's encrypted, because any encryption has a lifespan. So I think it's uh, how are you going to handle the the control of that those hashes or the dissemination when you know, the other word for IPFS is the distributed permanent web. Okay, uh, so, so uh, just uh, actually uh, we just uh, read the talks about IPFS and uh, what we actually just uh, find out from it like uh, we, we had some uh, that uh, packages from API like that from IPFS. So what we actually did is uh, when we were building a fit in Composer, uh, we just uh, did an API call and we just uh, shared my file there. So and I did get a hash, a returned a hash. And uh, I was just storing the hash inside my chain uh, in the ledger. And uh, whenever, uh, when uh, the data querying is accessed, then uh, uh, this, uh, this hash will be taken out and uh, uh, again, that will be uh, sent to IPFS using an API, and then I'll getting I'll be getting the data. So, uh, if you ask what is actually happening inside, and uh, actually I don't have that that kind of technical knowledge in that because, uh, like I said, we, we just started uh, building on this project, and uh, so we are actually lacking a lot of technical uh, knowledge in that. Hey, that's what it's about. That's what the, the healthcare special interest groups about is learning from each other and, and helping to deepen understanding. Um, another question we have coming up from Jim was how will you support SSI within the, the fabric solution and uh, SSI, I think you're mentioning single sign on. Is that correct, Jim? No, that's self sovereign identity. So okay. a lot of applications, but especially healthcare more than anything else, probably um, in a sense, my patient data and all that has to be secure, but also under my control. So the whole concept of healthcare, particularly in the future is all based on what I call my, my control of my information and consent management. So that's all. And so current systems don't really do that well, even if they do do it to some degree, but you have newer systems that support that level of identity management and control. The question is, Fabric doesn't have that today in its, um, it's not part of Fabric and it's certainly not part of IPFS. So how do you, in a sense, provide a personal identity information protection, data correlation issues, and all those kinds of things. Um, there's a million area, uh, issues in what I call 
identity access management and control. But Fabric has, it, it, I'll call it the Fabric system doesn't fully address that, I should say. If you become an expert in Fabric, you're not going to fully address those issues from a healthcare context. So have you given any thought to that? So I think it's likely they are not familiar with uh, Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Ares. And probably I would question whether Fabric is, is a good platform of choice anyway. Even if you are storing encrypted data on IPFS, you know, one solution is we store, a patient stores their data locally and share it as required by someone else on the network using provisions like Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Ares. It will be a lot more secure system and, on, and it will also be a very scalable system. It's very valid feedback. I want him another <clears throat> a fan of the Indy Aries Ursa uh, for control and access management as well. Something to, to definitely think of and dive deeper on as you all are evaluating this solution. Another question we had, uh, also we have a fan or not a fan, but someone who wants to help out is Mahul Shah. So at some point, if you guys could in the chat here, send in or share any contact information so Mahul may be able to get in touch with you, that would be wonderful. Uh, but another question is, uh, for when you were evaluating using Fabric here, was there any particular size of a typical health record you were evaluating or looking to use? Uh, did you, uh, did, in your study, were you able to evaluate the maximum size of one record that could be used here? And this was from Prashant. Uh, no, no, sir. Actually, we didn't have that much of uh, research there. Actually, what we actually did was we just uh, created some like uh, the data that we were having was like we just tested with dummy data like we just uh, entered some prescription and that's all, that's all but in real life uh, the data will be so much big and uh, as far as uh, like uh, as i said we we just started like with a college level project so uh, actually not uh, a lot of technical details was not necessary there so uh, like we didn't go into that uh, that much part but uh, when we are doing the project like uh, so at some time we were we just uh, when we were uh, reading some blogs we just uh, came to know that uh, when the size increases we cannot uh, store the data in blockchain because uh, whenever uh, since uh, this record data is again appended and appended uh, for a patient so the data will be uh, will be uh, becoming so uh, huge so uh, so that, that when when we just read that uh, point we just uh, uh, switch it to uh, like I, IPFS and we didn't just uh, uh, check it on how much data actually we can uh, use it on fabric. Awesome, thank you. The next question we had uh, comes from was Jim's comment on healthcare requires strong identity management control I think we hit that already because I asked yeah. sort of a variant of that earlier, so they did uh, address that. Thanks. Awesome, cool. And Andira also offered to help out with the project as well. So maybe you guys have a couple of advisors that can uh, help out for this overall solution. Um, uh, Brian, if you want to state this statement, it, uh, you we have an open forum now, so if you want to state this, then we'll look leave for open <laughs> questions. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, you first put off, there um, I want. I want to thank very much uh, uh, the, the um, folks from St. Kitts University. It's not easy to present from the other side of the planet uh, where it's, you know, Friday night uh, uh, there. So thank you very much for appearing. And I, I also want to appreciate, thank you to the um, working group here for being supportive. Uh, you know, a lot of folks are climbing the learning curve on how to use these technologies, uh, at starting at different points and different times and that sort of thing. And so, you know, a lot of this is familiar territory for a lot of folks, but it's important for us to, to really help Help build kind of a, uh, a global understanding of how best to use these technologies for thorny uh, uh, domains like like healthcare and data privacy uh, and just wanted to observe you know India uh, has a different starting point than many of us when it comes to digital identity 
uh, the very successful Aadhaar system, which has given digital identity to 1.3 billion people in the country, has been key to a lot of social services, a lot of human rights positive uh, types of things, um, but also raised a lot of uh, global and, and even local concerns around uh, its use in commerce, uh, uh, you know, especially since someone's Aadhaar number is kind of like your social security number, you know, it's something you, it, the more public it becomes, the more traceable you become, right? So, uh, um, Lots of folks trying to fix some of these issues, but India hasn't quite crossed the the, the gap to uh, self-sovereign identity. In fact, one could say Aadhaar has even inspired a lot of the research and, and movement towards user-centric or self-sovereign identity. So um, I, it's an interesting frame to look at some of this stuff in. I, I, and uh, um, uh, so, so just wanted to share that observation and, and again, thank everyone. Always insightful, Brian, thank you very much. Now, could we have an open forum for questions for anyone that uh, speak freely right now for any questions you have for the Sinkets team and, 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 their, and their study? Dr. Holt, you had a question? You just raised your hand? Yeah, I was kind of curious, and, and just uh, to um, pivot off of uh, Brian's comment, was in the Adhar system, and I'm curious, like, either that your team, the team's um, uh, perspective on the Adhar system in the role of, of uh, self-sovereign self digital identity and the combination of both of those, which is that, you know, the Adhar system really is like identity for over a billion people. And I think it is like federated identity, but the role of, of, of combining those into um, both a verification process that uh, you like then leverages self-sovereign to that identity where actually you can anchor it into the Adhar system. And I was curious people's thoughts on that. That could be an open question to anyone familiar with Adhar as well. Hi, this is Kent. So uh, we've been making uh, different types of platforms on Sawtooth and Fabric um, regarding a very similar system to the presentation today. And uh, in the and near you, future- And you say, sorry, Kent, sorry, for, for, um, for everyone's uh, background, you say we, what, what was- we? Oh, sorry. Um, I've been helping the uh, healthcare SIG uh, patient subgroup and also now with a payer subgroup with Ravish. So, um, We've been making similar systems to the presentation today and um, regarding the SSI front end, what we've been doing instead of hard coding the patient's name and private details onto the chain code, onto the uh, Fabric smart contract, we will, we've given them a random number and then we're going to use an SSI front end in the near future so that we can match the uh, credentials uh, to the chain code but not having to hard code them privacy thanks yeah i suppose that's a, more of like a random uh, number association and i think uh and my, my point is like for instance I'm a, I'm a physician and i have an mpi number a national provider identifier number here in the united states and i'm curious like very similar to the adhar system which is like more sort of a given identity or it's it also including biometrics and if you're not familiar in the united states most states require physicians to get fingerprinted than doing a background check. And I'm just curious, like in the self-sovereign digital identity world to claim either my national provider identity and associate it with me, the self-sovereign individual, or similarly in the ADHAR system of claiming my ADHAR national provider, national given identity is like, what's the workflow? Is, is that gonna be the, like the ADHAR system being the issuer in this case, or is there a, a cryptographic way of, of attesting to this I own this identity in either the Adhar system yeah. or the NPI database. Hi, uh, this is Ravish. You know, just to quickly answer that question, in the Adhar case, it is. Uh, it. Uh, I mean, you don't claim. I mean, obviously, I mean, it is is provided to you. Once issued, that's that's how you get associated with that. You know, uh, and, and I mean, it is not something you can claim. Like for example, a number of NRIs. Um, you know, and I'm I'm speaking from my personal experience. Sitting here, I cannot claim that whatsoever. It's not um, it's not a claim claimable. Rather, a, you know, a issued identity. 
it's just like SSN. I mean, you go, you provide the documents, you prove that you you are who you are, and and you get get an identity issue. Similar risks, you know, as Brian, you know, was talking about earlier, exists with that with with Aadhaar identity as well. Yeah, I suppose it's also more of a process. Uh, and identity, this is I sort of harp on, is that identi identity is a process of of using identifiers to cor cor correlate um, attributes about you, including your biometrics. And I guess that really is, in the Aadhaar system, very much a process of identity, of like yes. verifying through biometrics, names, identifiers, and like uh, whatever, iris scans that actually like, you, this is you. And, and that's like, I guess, uh, this the key distinction. And, and, and I'm, Pondering this now with like the use of biometrics, including fingerprints for physician identity, for instance, is uh, is that process of um, it's very much a process of identity, uh, not yeah. a given identity. Exactly, and I mean just to you know contrast with the if you look at the credit history here, right? I mean you go to Equifax, Experian, and all that's a claimed you you claim your uh, you know, credit history, right? I mean, you you will answer a bunch of questions that have happened in the past as transactions that have been recorded. In other case, I mean, there's a lot to be digitized yet in India, and it's not that straightforward that you can go and claim it. I mean, you it cannot be self-claimed. It, it's to be issued. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Well. Those are very stimulating questions to me, Aris, and good to have a global scope on that as I'm based here in the United States and I'm not aware of the, the issuing and the, um, and the ability for uh, someone to be able to attest their own identity as well. So that, that's very good information for me. Uh, any closing comments from the Sinkits team on, uh, on any of this? Uh, any feedback, any, anything else you would like the group to know uh, about your project and, and what you're trying to accomplish? Mike, this is Ravish, and I just wanted to put a, a, a quick, um, you know, word regarding what Kent was talking about. Um, we have we have been working on a, um, a, a pharmacy management and it involves some similar issues, but more on from pharmacy standpoint and the, the workflow. Um, we would love to come back in another. Uh, uh, I would say not the next meeting, but the following meeting. If you want to put us on the on the list with you know kind of a demo for the POC that we have been working on. Um, and I'm being ambitious. Uh, we have been, you know, moving, um, you know, we have been making progress, but I think that will help us get through some of the issues, uh, you know, from constraints perspective and get to a, you know, get to a presentation. Um, I would say not the next meeting, but the following meeting with a, with a working demo. So just Yeah, so in close, that. no, that, that's a good point. So in close, I'm going to actually uh, probably cancel the next meeting as the next meeting would fall on the Friday of Labor Day in the United States. And I, I feel a lot of people that may be based here may not, uh, maybe off for holiday or whatever have you. So, and in that time, I want, I'm going to send more detailed surveys. I know I mentioned this before, but I want to send more detailed surveys as to what times and preferences this group will want in order to uh, meet for this section, this, um, this session, as well as uh, I'll, I'll coordinate with David Boswell, who's the Linux Foundation community lead to find a, a valuable time that everyone can be able to join as well. But, um, but yes, definitely for the not this the two Fridays from now, but two weeks after that, we we could definitely have you present into the group, and you and I can talk offline about those details as well. Absolutely. So um, thank you everyone for joining today. Thank you for the, the Saint Gitz team for uh, your presentation and for uh, piquing our interest and in all the beneficial questions from the group. Uh, that concludes this week's meeting. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, my email is associated to the wiki and. Uh, another great uh, fantastic uh, presentation today look forward to seeing you guys all soon and be on the lookout for the surveys i'll be sending i would love everyone's participation uh that will help us out a lot